And, and at that point, it was like everything started off with like a 25, 25, 25 with you, Banks, and Tommy, and who else? It's me, Banks, Tommy, Apex. That's the okay, original okay. four. The yeah. all spent at 25, yeah. Bro, that's like where it all gets dark. Like the, the level of corruption that I talk about today versus then, it's actually not as bad today as what it was back then. Because today, it's more like finessery, but they're still going to like give you something, but they're going to make you work for something that you should own. But back then, it was a literal like robbery, broad day robbery. Like he, oh. I told you, at one point, he stole all of Banks' shares, and we all had to dilute to make room for banks because he actually stole them all like he everything that guy did was just evil 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 all right so about a month ago phase rain made a couple of videos where he was talking about how his relationship with phase became sour over the years in my original video covering the situation i said this would be very interesting to just sit down and talk to rain and ladies and gentlemen we made it happen i thought i knew a lot of the stuff that happened behind the scenes but there was so much here that shocked me so here's phase rain's entire story with phase from the start until today yeah so um in your last video, you said, I want to tell my full phase story. So here we are today. And I'm ready to hear this full story, man. Okay, so then let's just start. 2012 was probably the most like magical moment in phase, bro. Like joining back then was the most like fulfilling feeling. Like it was the most magical shit ever. I'm telling you, like I woke up the next day, like I had to check my Twitter. Am I still in phase? Like it meant that much to us back then. That's why it hurts me so much. Cause like, bro, this was a place where I didn't even give a fuck about the money to join phase. What was the biggest thing for me was, wow, I get to talk to everybody in the Skype chat now. Wow, I get to see all the phase videos early before they drop. I get to see the Dropbox with the clips. Like. It was really about what we were doing that mattered to me, right? And that was the most beautiful part about phase is that it really felt like this brotherhood that were all that all shared a similar vision and had similar goals and were all ready to do the same together. And yeah. that's like where phase blew up and that's what caused because the trick shots were cool, but more it was about the relatability to these people. Like, wow, look at all these guys living together. They all care about the same thing. They all have the same goal. And most of the viewers, they probably wish they had that. We were kind of like a a real life version of like a sitcom show in a way. You know what I mean? Like how there's like the friend group, they're always at the same bar or the same like coffee shop, like friends and how I met your mother. Mm -hmm. But in our situation, we're always at the phase house and like our, you know, our central park, our in McLaren's bar is the phase house. Yeah. Right? So people felt this like, you know, that was like phases, the biggest part of phase of brand identity was like the phase house and the car and such. So people got this feeling towards us of relatability and they didn't feel this like celebrity distance void thing that you feel with like A-listers. And when people meet me, they're like, bro, it's so weird. Cause like, I know you, but you don't know me. So it feels weird to talk to you right now. Cause like they genuinely feel like they know me from all these videos, right? And to yeah. some, to an extent, some of it's true. You know what I mean? Cause like they've, I've talked about so many things, I've been open about so many things. So I'm sure there's a lot of like really big fans of me out there that do know me to an extent. How long were you making content until you joined Phase? Six years. Wow. I started in 2006. Wow. So back then it was strictly off who the best trick shotter was. And I got snubbed for a year because Apex hated me, which was actually a super funny story. Like when we were kids, over a ladder stall, some nerdy cause, bro. I was like, really? Hey, dude, that's when I sort of got. But we were kids, right? Um, and I remember, like, I was supposed to join in 2011, and then I remember Seabass at the time. He was like running. He like told me, um, he's like, yeah, we can't recruit people that like you know our members hate. And like I was like, oh, wow. And then I kind of like gave up for a little bit, but then I tried again, and I joined immediately after. And then Seabass just couldn't deny greatness at that point. And no, I was kidding. But like, yeah, he just ended up recruiting me and shit. And then yeah, but that was still like when it was nobody's face was really out there like that. Phase wasn't making like nothing, bro. Like all the sponsors would pay Phase like a thousand dollars a month. The, the way that Seabass and Tommy made money back then is they'd sell sub box spots. Wow. So wait, was this like Control Freaks and Elgato intro era or? About the same time, but like 2011, 2012. Like bro, even me and my high school friends bought a Phase Clan sub box wow. spot. When we were kids, we all put our money together and we bought a sub box spot. Cause they used to actually like sub boxes back in the day used to actually get you subs yeah so we made a fake little clan and like yeah like we just like paid back then and it gets you like 1k but it's the most dead followers of all time it's like what are you even you're paying for it to look cooler for you as a yeah. kid right so i'm saying things were very different back then getting a youtube banner was like an accomplishment mm -hmm. back then so like it was very different and obviously that's what happens to any type of industry that's like you know flourishing and it's like popping off for the first time is that all these greedy want to flip their money using what we built right so that obviously comes in way later in the way later in the story. So everything from 2012 to 13, 13, it was like when we started like showing ourselves more, going to these events, showing who we are, this, that. And then 2014, Phase House was born. Now, first year, straight gamers, who are these people? 2013, oh, these are who they are behind the trick shots. 2014, oh wow, they're living together and they're making content and they're switching up from gaming to real life. And that's like again where we got our biggest boom. Before that, again, like it was like doing well, but like I was doing well because I was uploading so much. Mm -hmm. But if I uploaded once a day or once every like three, four days, I probably would only made like two racks a month, like maybe oh, wow. max. 
right? So it wasn't like anything to, re to like retire my family or do any of that yeah. yet, right? And what time period was this about? It was like 2013, even 14 though. Even like 14, like wow. it wasn't like we were making, like even before we moved to the, the New York house, it's not like any of us were making like a crazy amount of money off it. The New York house is like when we started making money. Because before okay. that it was like, it was good. Like I retired my mom before I moved there. But it was like that's awesome yeah that's the first thing i did with my money is i retired her immediately off rip because i was like that's... she hated her she worked at a dollar store she hated it she'd work too hard she'd always come home sad about it so that's like the first thing i did i was making like 10 bands a month dropped out of high school and i was just giving her i was giving her six out of the 10 every month because like she needed it anyway that's honorable yeah, i didn't need it bro that's insane gamer kid what the hell do i need money for like <laughs> fine i'm living with her still like she should have the money right so that's wow. i've been till this day she hasn't worked a day since then right she, i just want her to live her best life i don't give a what i have to do she has to stay happy and it's like do her own thing she deserves she's a sweet athlete i love my mom i respect um, you for that so it wasn't anything like that at that point right but again i like kind of like i retired to retired her a little bit too early just because so that's the thing most people must have thought i had way more money because i talked about it publicly back then mm. but i didn't have 30k in my bank account when i was making 10 a month so it was uh -oh. like <laughs> it's solid money but it's not anything to like like i low-key risked it yeah yeah Definitely. i wanted to so bad like my equivalency of like getting a car or anything at that time was retirement mom. like that to me yeah in my heart that was like the biggest flex for me that was the most fulfilling thing i could have done still so grateful that that's the first thing i did and forever will care about that i love her but um aside from that um so no we weren't like making any type of money like that yet and it was just still getting to get big but then 2015 came around and that's like when our like pranks and all of our real life really started popping off hmm. and and did you move into the house, what, started 2015? Yeah, or? no, it, well, yeah, end of 2014. I, I moved in like okay. December 9th, December, something like that, like 2014. So right before the new year. So it was all, everything was amazing, but we still were all on the same path, same goal, same mission, all trying to create, all trying to grow, make phase bigger, get every phase recruit to pop off because back then, and the reason phase recruits now essentially don't mean anything, they mean as much as subscribers do on YouTube. Like it doesn't even really matter. It's all about recommended. Mm. It's like, Bay's members, they don't get that subconscious stamp of approval anymore. You have to earn yeah. it now. You don't get that automatic. He's in phase. He's worthy. I'm ready. I, I'm, sub, I'm subbing him. I'm going to watch what he's got. Now it's like, oh, like new phase member. All right. He's going to prove himself. And then I'm going to pay attention to him. It's like mm -hmm. how it works now because phase has blown the reputation of having like a, a, a new fire member that like, you know, is just breaking barriers, pushing popping up. That doesn't happen as much anymore. So that like dream to the kid to joining phase and then making it is getting smaller right so now it's just like you're better off signing to an org that'll pay you more because yeah. that's going to be the dream if anything but so that was the value in phase that i always like loved and wanted to preserve is that excitement that a fan felt because i was that fan mm. i was that fan i know what it's like to want to join phase that bad and that feeling is what birthed this entire mm. and that's what's going to forever boost these type of brands in this industry because look at amp look at sidemen look at Aiden and Speed, even though they're not necessarily a brand, but like just <clears> look at it's it's that association, that relatability. Like again, Aiden having a stretch camera in a messy room is part of a bigger reason why he's big. If he was every single time, if he was in a ten million dollar studio, I promise you, unless he had collab streams every time with like rappers, they would do relatively way worse than what it is. Yeah, now. I promise you, definitely. Without even knowing, I know it's because of the relatability aspect that's so important to preserve with your fan base, right? So that's my big thing with Phase is preserving that and make that's always a thing. Unfortunately, we had people that came along and tried to like take advantage of it. And that was like our CEO in 2015. I'm not going to say his name because again, it might be, um, I, I, I think he still owns some of FaZe. That's Wait, what I'm saying. really? I think, yeah, bro. Cause he, he tried to steal the whole company. So that was like a whole thing. Okay. And he almost did. So this time were you guys just like tunnel vision uploading three times a day? Not everybody. Um, just me adapt and apex wow. like daily, daily. Okay, how did you guys get involved with the whole Counter-Strike scene? Tico, so Tico would play a lot. Tico's one that put us all on. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously I knew Counter-Strike, but like I never played it like that. And Tico came in, he started playing it, and it looked fun, so we all just started playing it. And then we got really into it. And then again, that's like when me and Banks got into the gambling, because we just we just naturally started doing it. And then yeah, that, you know. Mm. How did the whole CSGO Wild thing come up then? At that time, our old CEO who actually ended up scamming us, I'll tell the whole story, but he ended up scamming us, stealing from us, lied to us, manipulated everything, everything you could think of. Um, the one piece of advice he did give me was don't own that, don't have any side of, sort of equity with that company, just hmm. in case you don't want to be attached to it like that. You don't want any of that. So he told me that because I didn't know at the time. I was like, yeah, I guess like 
if me and Banks are going to do promo, y'all are going to set it all up, then yeah, I guess we'll own some of it in the beginning. Then he told us not to. He said, it's a very bad idea. You don't want to be associated like that. Just promote it as like, you know, simple as you can. So okay. he gave me that advice, 100% what I did. And he's right for that for sure. Because look at how that age, that age beautifully. Yeah. That would have been so bad if we owned some of it, right? So we were on a rev share deal. I want to say it was like 15% that we were supposed to take oh, in wow. all the money that the website made after cost. I got nowhere near that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> nowhere near that. I made three hundred thousand dollars out of it, which I immediately took that money and I put it in the Counter Strike team. So I bought half of the Counter Strike team with that money. Faze never ended up paying me that money back till last year. I did that twenty fifteen till last year. I didn't get it. I went to the IRS, which is hilarious because they they weren't they didn't want to pay me for so long. And I asked for years and years and years, even when we had the money, but they just wouldn't pay me. So that's you know that's another thing. Would rather just pay out all the other. I get it. Cool, whatever. Um, uh, Same, dude. But yeah, so I could have pressed for more. And I told you that dude, Vlad, the skin hub guy, he was the guy that did all that. I don't know why I never like talked about him publicly before. I, I have no idea why. Maybe I did. I just don't remember. But he like, I'm telling you, Zach engaged the guys that ran the site. They're amazing dudes. They're very nice guys. They everything they did, they followed the book. They literally were the only ones that actually moved out to an island to go do it legally. Like they went to Antigua, <laughs> moved out there to go do everything legally and actually get a license for it. When they had the lowest amount of like percentage they took from every like, I think it was called a rake. Every rake, they took the least amount. And they shut down immediately when Valve said, stop immediately, like no hesitation. Like I'm telling you, they're actually cool guys, but of course it's an easier storyline to believe like, oh, we raked it, we did this, we did this, like, and then also it was like a 50, 50 coin flip. You know what I mean? It wasn't the, wait, did we, I don't know if we had the, the pot. But I, all I remember was like the 50 50 because I'd always play the coin flip. I want to say it was only like a coin flip. A lot of the, the speculation around this was because Banks went on to multiple podcasts and claimed he found a infinite money glitch. He found this crazy way to make all this money, like $200,000 a day. I think he's just more proud of the fact that he was able to be a part of something that made 200K a day. And he's just wording it wrong. He doesn't understand that people are literally gonna take it as you own that, but I get it. It was a part of phase though. I mean, you guys were worth what? $2 billion in the stock market? I know at one point, I, but that was but that was way before. That was way, he said on the podcast way before phase was, we actually had an idea of how much phase was worth. Cause we've always known phase is worth a lot of money, but we didn't have a dollar amount until we went public. Like, I didn't know the, I never knew, right? I, it was just a vague, like, buy a lot. I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we don't ask, we never had a number. Never. They never give me a number been like, yo, your shares or your company are worth this. Never. And again, they never really told me how much I, well, they told me how much I had, but they never told me how much anybody else had or wow. everything was always in the dark, bro. And they would try to sh try to be transparent as least as possible. And that's my biggest issue. And that's why I'm going to get to our lawyer later because she did some very shady. Okay. So 2015, you guys were going through this insane content grind. At what point did this new CEO get involved? How'd you guys end up going over to Norway multiple times? Where did all this start? So only when, um, again, and I don't blame them for it, but Tommy and Banks at the time, they weren't uploading any videos or doing anything like that. So they were like, you know, more showing up to the events as much as possible, doing all that type of, and um, they ended up meeting this dude in Norway who they just got, they were just younger and naive, man. And they were just excited for the possibilities and everything. And they got taken advantage of. This guy came in, said he knew all these people. I can connect you here, here, here. I could build you a car. You know, this, he came in, took advantage of guys that don't really know much. And he, he preyed on like the trust. He tried to just get them to trust, do things to make them feel like he cares about them, but it's all a game. Mm. It was just all a game, just earn their trust just so they could come to us and be like, I love this guy. I see him like a father, this, that. I care about him. He cares so much about us. We love just to like try to build our trust. Like the, the level of corruption that I talk about today versus then, it's actually not as bad today as what it was back then. Because really? today it's more like finessery, but they're still gonna like give you something, but they're gonna make you work for something that you should own. But back then it was a literal like robbery, broad day robbery. Like he, oh. I told you at one point he stole all of Banks' shares and we all had to dilute to make room for Banks because he actually stole them all. Like he, everything that guy did was just evil, evil, evil. Go to our entire network, sell off as much of FaceClan as he can. Go to Keemstar. Hey, you want 5% of Keemstar? Go to our homie O'Neill. Hey, you want 5% of FaceClan? 250K for him, 250K for him. It's like collecting money off people. Coming to all of us. Hey, I need you to invest in my company. We're going to merge it with FaZe later. Da, 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 da. 100, I, either 125 or 150 from me. 150, 125 from Alex. We all invested the same. I think Lucas put in 25 more than us. Wow. Like, or 50 more than us. Something like that. Oh, so, so he put in. This was the company that Lucas like invested in and got scammed on? Yes, 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 yes. It was our old CEO's company. Yeah. So yeah, we were all investing in his company and he was just doing all these things. To, but also at the same time back then, it was like easier to gain our trust. So it didn't really take much like that, right? We didn't, we, we didn't go through the game like that yet. He was the first like 
boomer to like show interest in us and like flash a bunch of wealth and so on but he, the craziest thing is he didn't even have it but he was so good at appearing like he had it you know what he would have killed he should have made one of them like fake ass ig courses he would have became a hundred millionaire off that <laughs> i swear to god he's so good at making it seem like he gets it you know what I mean? But he doesn't. He doesn't. Oh, he's just like, are you like Tinder swindler, you guys? Oh, God. He Tinder swindlered the f***ing out of us. Absolutely. And, you know, we got played for a long time. And he, the way he positioned himself legally in the company, like, us too. So that was a huge part of it. That's the thing, man. It's like, why I want to speak out about this is because there's so much stuff that, like, all these up-and-coming creators just don't really know about. This isn't their world, right? So they're, they don't think twice about being safe in these industries because it's just so new and who really you think who really cares like that but it's like we just need to build the same type of awareness that musicians have now like don't sign 360 deals don't sign too early make sure you sign for your, like the things that are now finally being understood in the music scene after and how long after how long so i don't want like people got to be smart than that realize that it's the same people coming here to do the same thing to us mm -hmm. we can't let that happen and i understand it's a very small demographic of people most people don't give it they're like i'm not yeah. gonna be a big youtuber anyways or be in the gaming space or any of that but it's more about just understanding how these industries work period even if it doesn't affect you mm -hmm. it's just not a bad thing to understand how these industries work how this all works understanding the illusion pulling back the curtain seeing what really goes on i feel like it's important just in general for everyone's understanding but i mean it still does affect the viewer though that if too. suddenly their creator exactly, is just depressed and doesn't upload like exactly. they used to they don't have the same exactly. energy but dude that's what killed me and again i'm taking full responsibility i still could have posted every day i still could have mustered up the strength and courage to post every day yeah it's unfortunate but i didn't and a lot of it was because of just how badly I felt about this face that kind of like snowballed and got worse and worse and worse and led to worse things, right? But I felt so terrible about the brand that I just like put so much time and effort into and how much I loved it, how much of I was a fan of it, how much I just wanted to take care of this baby forever and turn into what it was supposed to be. Just kind of got robbed and kind of got like infested with all these people that have the wrong yeah. intentions and they're here. And don't get me wrong, the employees, I love them all. Actually, the employees at Face Clan, they're great. A lot of them are like fans, and that's what I wanted. I wanted to all be fans, like people that consume the content that like actually care about Face to work at Face. Who better? Why would I want some dude who has an ego that comes from a random, like like a big company that doesn't mm -hmm. really know what they're doing here and just takes the money, takes the shares, and then doesn't really do anything of value? Then it's like leave, and then just put work the Face Clan and it's fucking LinkedIn. I don't give a fuck about that. I don't care about that. I would rather be a fan who actually cares about this. Yeah. You're gonna leave work at the warehouse, then go home and watch phase videos or go home and watch YouTube and like bring that idea back. That's someone who's gonna go home and listen to Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm not, I don't really know Led Zeppelin. <laughs> but this like on some boomers. And that's what I don't like. So it's more the executives and the C-suites that I mostly don't agree with. And I a lot of it's political, like why people are in positions they're in. It's just weird, bro. And I don't like phase being that company. And again, people could also always say, like, well, that's what happens when you sold out. We didn't sell out. That's the biggest issue is that no. it's not like somebody came to all of us and said like, yo, you're being like paid off to let all these people in. It does kind of all happen under our nose. We let one person who let one person who let one person who we'll all start doing this together. You know what I mean? Like it was never. Like okay, wait. So did it all start going sour when the first CEO started coming in? Yeah. And this whole structure is his. I swear to God, it's like the same structure with different people, but it's the same structure. I don't see it differently. I don't see anything for like talent development or like content distribution like we don't have anything like that there's no like actual distribution out of phase clan like you'd think phase clan has all that and they don't and i always tell them i'm like bro why are we looking all over the place for employees guess where they are they're they actually follow us already that's where they are it's our fans it's all the up-and-coming creators it's what we're in the business for bro yeah but they don't they don't understand this basic and fundamentals of this game so it's like how are they going to succeed and now I, I if they do succeed which i hope they do because i don't want phase to do bad by any means mm -hmm. but when they if they do I promise you the only move that makes sense in their head, let's just buy a big star. Let's just buy someone who already has influence. Because they don't know how to grow that. They don't know how to actually mm. like make it. Like we used to take talent that was small and turn them into superstars. They could never do that now. They don't know what the f they're doing. So that's what drives me crazy. They, they would just have to pay someone off. That's it. Mm. And do a fake partnership. And we've done that before. And how does that look? They don't actually care. They're going to treat us like a brand deal. So it's never actually going to do the conversion that you really want. Sure, you might be able to sell a certain amount of water bottles branded with this big influencer's name, but it won't give those fans and those, and those customers the feeling that even a fan did back in the day buying G Fuel. Yeah. It's never, it's not going to give that feeling under those circumstances. You have to create an ambiance. You have to create an energy of people, some sort of chemistry that makes people want to follow along and pay attention. That's yeah. it.
tell stories that people want to feel a certain way. And they don't get that that's what matters. That's why we have our fans, not because of the trick shots. You think fans give about me after quitting for five years pretty much for YouTube because of my trick shots, bro? You think somebody saw ever saw me probably been like, bro, your trick shot. Actually, I think that did happen once, but people don't do that. Like it's more about, you know what I mean? Like it's more about like who you are that people like relate to and like similarities, bro, relatability. You know, even if it's like with me, of course, I come from the gaming background, but you know how many fans I have that don't even play games and don't give a about games? Mm -hmm. It's more just like they relate to me on some sort of like whether it was my struggle or whether it was and just the way I see life, whatever it is, right? It's like more real life things. So that's like what matters and that's like what they've lost sight on and they just like kind of look at it for money and i fully understand businesses need to focus on the money to you know keep the shop open i completely get it but there is a there's a nice middle ground right to yeah. where we'll do this because it makes sense for business move but we can't compromise the brand's integrity so we're not going to do this but we're going to do this so that you know what i mean like there needs to be a middle ground you can't constantly just brand deal brand deal, brand deal. and like also what they do is originally i used to think that they would use like smaller talent because they would get a better split off them. So say if they gave rug 20% or 80% for rug, 20% for phase. I assumed in the beginning that it would be 30% for small creators, 70% for phase. But what they actually do is they'll sell all of our numbers collectively. And then when they get a deal, so say it's like whatever, let's just call it $500,000. They can pick and choose how much they sell each member that do a deal with. So say if they did it with rug, maybe they'd have to cut them 100 to 200K. But if they do it with a small talent, they can cut them 5K or 10K and then they get the profit, the 490. But they sold it off everyone's numbers, but they're going to use the phase main page to post it because that's what has the bulk of our followers. And they kind of just like play the companies in my opinion, right? Instead uh -huh. of using the best possible talent to get the best possible result to get a, a, a extension on a deal or an upgrade, right? To get an actual, because think about it, if you overperform on the deal, you're going to get more money. So they're thinking about it all wrong. They're thinking, let's take more on this, but then kind of chalk the deal in the future and kind of chalk the brand as well in the process instead of trying to execute it properly and pay the most so that in the long run, we get the most. It's kind of mm -hmm. like, that's my biggest thing is like, there's either the brand building model or there's the high volume, high like monetization model, right? So it's like, or you just put out hell of all, you don't really care about the quality. It's like, put as much as you can to try to make as much, or you try to put out the best possible and curate the best like feeling possible to create a brand, right? And you can create a brand off volume, but it's about the quality of the volume, right? It's like, you can't put out bullshit. Like if I, like if my three, three videos a day were an hour long video cut up into three videos, it would no way, no, no way. You know what I mean? Like. There's levels to that, right? So, okay, so going back to the timeline, wait, where, where in the timeline are we here roughly? Oh yeah, I kind of I kind of jumped seven no, years. No, it's fine. <laughs> I mean, dude, you're very passionate about it and I see this. It, it, that applies the whole time. That thing, that like ideology of like prioritizing money over like building the brand and giving the fans the feeling mm -hmm. has been a thing for a long. As soon as these older people got involved, because they, they don't get it, they're not a fan. Mm -hmm. You low-key have to be a fan or at least be a fan of something like that to get that magical feeling. Yeah. Like for me, even though I was a massive fan of phase like that, like the way that I feel like a fan feels about me is like the same way I feel about Jeff Hardy. Like if you know who Jeff Hardy is, I feel like that's the same feeling. Like I grew up in Norway, I don't know who like, he is. Oh, really? Yeah. What? He's a goat. <laughs> he was just a WWE guy, man. He's so cool. I just love Jeff Hardy, right? So it's like, I don't give a fuck about WWE. I don't give a fuck about wrestling. But when I see Jeff Hardy, I'm like, damn, that's Jeff Hardy. That's tough, mm -hmm. right? But only Jeff Hardy. So I feel like a lot of the fans that don't pay attention to like COD or YouTube anymore like that or, or at least the face shit. Like when they see me, they kind of like get that Jeff Hardy thing, like the way I feel like this as a kid because they have this like connection yeah. to me because of the nostalgia I give them in a way. Right. And I like that feeling, bro, that's just what this is all about, man. It's like it's all about giving people that feeling. And if we can make money in the process, beautiful. But you might still have a like a connection to your fans as well. But like, yeah, my no, was so do. long. Like so many of those motherfuckers watched me while I still wasn't making money for so long. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? So I have a different connection to them. It's like, yeah, I, I really to, see them as people, not as a number. I used to stream on Twitch for like 20 viewers. Do you have your OGs with you still? I actually definitely still have a lot of my original viewers still watching to this day. And I still recognize some of those people in the comments till this it. day. That, bro, the OGs are the best, like the ones that were there from like day one and like, it's just, it's so cool, bro. Okay, so going back it. to 2015, you guys got a new CEO and what yeah, happened from there? We never really had a CEO before that because it wasn't, there was not even a fake business structure. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, it was like right when the business started. And, and yeah. at that point, it was like, everything started off with like a 25, 25, 25 with you, Banks and Tommy and who else? Yes, yeah, so, so that's, it's, it's me, Banks, Tommy, Apex. That's the okay, original okay. four, the yeah. also 25, yeah. Um, Bro, that's like where it all gets dark, to be honest, after that. And it's been dark for a very long time. Um, that's what I'm saying. It's like 
they always try to like push it back off the old CEO and say like, yeah, like we can't be fully responsible for his problems, and everything that he did, because he also scammed me 40% of the shares that I was owed. We all had the equal amount of shares and he gave them all a 40% boost, gave me nothing. They absolutely gave me nothing. They didn't tell me wow. about it the last year. And this happened in 2018. So that wow. hit me weird too. I'm like, bro. But again, like this one, that this one to make sure that much was settled before they, you know, yeah. did that. But I still like, bro. I just never felt good about it because it's like that's what also like triggered this for me is that like I realized like, bro, if they're gonna do this to me, they'll do this to any phase member. Like, they don't give a. Fuck. Like, there's no way because I'm just being real. Like, I'm not trying to sound like an asshole or anything, but like I was the face of face for so fucking long, and I built so much of this brand. So it's like if they'll do that to me and someone who's a massive shareholder, like of course they'll do it to anybody else. I don't give a. Fuck. And that's yeah. the issue. I don't want to speak out for other people's problems, but they do do that to other people. A lot of people are just afraid to speak. They really are. They're so afraid. They're afraid of putting this life in the past. They're afraid of, you know, what might come. It, they're just afraid. And I understand, but it's just, for me, I just feel like I, of course I'm afraid too, bro. It's not like I'm in a position where I was a few years ago. It's like, I'm afraid too, but it's like, I have to. I just, I have to for what this is, because otherwise the system wins and I don't want the system to always win. I'm sick of it. And it's, they got, they got, obviously got, they got more, they got more ammo than me. They know how to run this game a lot better in terms of like, you know, censoring. When you're talking about like system, are you talking about like the phase corporate structure? In general, the system, bro. The system of people just trying to take advantage of people. That's it. Mm -hmm. It's just that. It's a system in so many different things. Like I talk about like the same system in the music industry, the same structure, all that. I don't want that here, bro. Especially not in phase. Energy can go do that. I don't go, but phase, I, I can't have phase do that, bro. That, so that's like why we can even talk about the Tifu contract and stuff like that. That came from the old CEO. Like the way that he had his contract, I want to say it was 80 20, like 80 to phase. Okay, wait. So how long was the CEO involved? And like, when did everyone realize that he was no good? Oh, the CEO? Um, 2015 to 2017, 18. And then I forget exactly like what caught him that made everybody finally catch on. Um, I'm pretty sure he was salarying his wife, who'd never even worked the phase, 600,000 a month. Because he took this one dude's investment money for like 20 plus million. And he kind of just like, and that's what I'm saying, it gets dark because it's been, it hasn't been transparent since, right? Like, bro, they, and now they try to play back like, yeah, we have been transparent. You know, you have it. Especially and also, is the current CEO aware of this? The current CEO was brought in by that CEO. He brought Lee in as a guy to open doors, he would say, because he was so connected in LA. So that's why he brought him and he was called a door opener. They have meetings with all these other companies and try to get investors like that. So that's like why he brought him in. Wow. I don't know how we met him, but um, he just he did the same shit to Lee. He like caps that he knew this guy, this guy, this guy. Even the guy that ended up investing like 25 million or whatever, he told me that they grew up together. He said they're from Norway and they grew up together. And then when I asked him after we exposed him and everything, like to the whole company, we had a thing like where our old president and like Lee, we all like talked to the whole company and they told him like, yeah, pretty much scammer he did us over but we kicked him out and now we're moving on type i af after that i asked him i was like so did you like suspect him of being that way like when you guys were kids like was he always like a pathological liar he said bro i met him on the flight over here what are you talking about i was like what <laughs> like he always made him sound like he was his childhood friend that was royalty that had hella money and like he's always grew up going to his crib and his family's rich like he set up a whole backstory to his relationship with him like he would random details like, oh, he's crazy. I'm telling you, it's like, I oh, I feel bad for him. I feel like he genuinely believes what he's either. He Dang. genuinely believes what the f he's saying, because a lot of it's like, why would you even lie about that? But then a lot of it is he might actually be like living some alternate reality in his head that he thinks is real, but is I don't even know. Wow. Wait, what did I say? No, one 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 reality where he's like making present and one where he's just such a good liar that he understands exactly what he's doing. He's just like, he's really just that deep into this line. Like, he loves it. So yeah, no, I mean, it's insane that he got that far in general, though. I mean, CEO of phase, I mean, it's pretty far in life, I guess. I mean, to be honest, bro, back then it wasn't hard. I'll tell you that much. It wasn't hard if like you, if somebody was good at bullshitting enough, if you had any sort of business structure, like, bro, we were idiot kids, bro. We didn't know how it worked. I just knew how to Sony Vegas and upload dog. <laughs> All duty Sony Vegas upload prank. Mm -hmm. Like I wasn't focused on all that. I wasn't really focused on how this works. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad I, you know, was in the front seat and got to learn it all firsthand. Yeah. You know, what I mean, like I want now I want to spread all that knowledge so people don't go through what I went through because I don't think there can be anything more. I don't know. There's a ton of more terrible things, but it's pretty shitty to build something from like when you're a kid and then kind of have it like definitely you know, over. I've never took a salary since day one because I'm like I don't need the money Phase does to grow and be a company, and that was my problem was. 
And this is a tip for business too, bro. You can't do like that unless you own 100% of the brand. Unless you own 100% of it and you know you'll pay yourself back later, don't do that because they do not give a fuck about you. And that's the issue with a bunch of other members too is that they did as much as they could now because they said, no, they're going to take care of me later. That's mm. not the reality. Even as a major shareholder, even as a person that means as much as I do the brand, they'll still f me over when it's convenient for them too. And they'll still use random things as uh, leverage against me when it's convenient to like my legal status. They would use that as leverage against me. Oh, we can't pay you because your legal status, but okay, how about if we do 100K? How about if we do 300K? Like wow. that was my problem. It's like, I trusted that brand. I like never took a salary, never took money from it because I said the brand needs it. But look how the brand did me in the end. That's what sucks. It's like, but you gotta make sure your ownership you don't give that up. That's why I'm yeah. so proud of Spanx lady, bro. You know Spanx? No. <laughs> you, you do. The girl leggings. Like all the leggings oh. the girl are Spanx. Okay. She owns 100% of it. Really? Boss, <laughs> so proud of her. I don't know her, but I'm proud of her. Like that's, <laughs> much, that's such a hard thing to scale from nothing to a billion dollar business while owning 100% of it. Yeah. It's very hard. Did you guys live in the New York house for, for one year or? Two. Okay, so 2016 rolls around. You guys actually end up buying the G2 CSGO team. That was 2015, I want to say. Now, I'm I'm pretty sure it was 2016, or that's what my research said at least, but I mean, I could be wrong. No, no, maybe. I, I, I remember like one of my first like wild videos was in like October, September, like, so yeah, like you're right. It was definitely like, that's when I got, because I only got paid one time from ever. I never, it wasn't like a monthly payment thing that came from CSGO Wild. It was one time scammed so it was like over this in and out like that so you just Straight took that like one that, lump right? sum of money and just punted it to g2 immediately sent it to carlos <laughs> took it carlos here huh and then got a cs team and never got a fucking dollar from it but phase gets to get it you know phase gets all the fucking championship trophies from it bro sometimes i swear to god i want to do that ice cube scene you know what i'm talking about instead of the content he's like i'll put up these motherfucking records <laughs> on god like sometimes i really want to do that i'm like these are my fucking trophies <laughs> and, uh, no i'm just kidding but it's just annoying, bro, because it's just like they celebrate that team so much. And it's like oh, the guy that bought it for us, <laughs> that guy. It's like, yeah, I see your frustration. So how was the genuine vibe of the New York house in 2016? Bro, it was amazing. And this was the best part about the faith that was back then versus what it turned into in L.A. L.A. immediately ruined it for the sole reason that everyone gained their own friend clicks. And, and there was more space between us. So people started kicking it less naturally. Like, I mean, literally, because the houses were too fucking big. That's why I don't like big houses for that. Like, yeah. it was actually just like, you just wouldn't kick it as often. So it the bond slowly started dying. And then that old CEO, he actually turned us against each other. Like, he'd come to me. Bank said this about you. Go to Banks. Norton said this about you. And then, like, he just do this all around and just to gain trust through us. Like, listen, I don't want to tell you this. Don't repeat that I told you. Like, he literally told me things like, don't ever tell Banks I told you this, but he said this about you. And I don't, and I feel like, you know what, he probably made that up. Realistically, he made that up. You know what I mean? And he would just turn- Why would he do that to his cash cow though? Because it's it's not necessarily, it's to it's for control. It's to gain that trust and control because he wouldn't like fully try to turn us against like that, but like just not to speak to each other and like work together is what he wanted. That was his goal. I'm so telling you, it's his weird. Because that's, that's what he did to all of us. He did that to all of us. He would talk to like Alex about me, the me to Alex, like everybody. How would he do that though? I know it's very, weird but that's the only thing i gained from it. it's like he was just trying to gain some sort of trust between us like he wanted me to feel trusting of him because he told me this about him and then he's gassed me up in the process and trying to like value me more but then like making it prom like uh making me promise not to say anything and like whatever because he doesn't want to complicate things whatever but he just do that over and over and over again and he just like slowly it wouldn't be anything crazy it wouldn't be like you know what i mean but it's like little things here and there not enough to like ruin a friendship like completely ruin it yeah but enough to damage it here by here you know what i mean it's a little by little i mean you know so it's like things like that son yeah so i'm saying he would do things like that it was more to control the information it's like don't speak to each other speak through me like I, he'd really say like that okay so did this all start in the la yeah. house or um it started happening with la house mostly with banks specifically with banks like towards the end of it and then um in 2017 towards the end of that yeah, he would do that with like everybody else also. But mostly like in the beginning, it was with, it was pretty much where it was convenient. It wouldn't be all the time, right? It was like where it was did convenient he, for okay, him. Wait, so, so did he like go back and forth from like Oslo to New York or? I'm trying to think if he ever even came to the New York house like that. I don't know. Maybe, maybe he came once or twice. So you guys were just talking to him on like Skype and stuff or? Yeah, but we'd go to like Norway sometimes too. And like we'd see him at events and stuff. Like a lot of the CSGO events because they're in like Europe and stuff. A lot of it's like this dog memory like there's so much memory that i just have to like undig too but it wasn't like all the time that he would turn us against each other because like you're right like why would he turn his main money people against each other but when convenient right like when things started questioning so whenever i'm like questioning 
turned people against me. When Banks is going to something, he turned things against him so he could so he could swallow his shares. You know what I mean? Like he turned us slightly against against Banks, even though I was never against him. When they when they locked him up and like 5150 him and shit, like I was there. Like I went to go see him in the hospital. Like I cared about him, bro. But then that's what I'm saying. Banks had this narrative back then that like I didn't care about him and I abandoned him back then for a little bit. I'm like, bro, from like how? But like mm -hmm. again, it was the old CEO like putting in his head and being like, I'm the only one here for you. I'm the only one that cares about you while stealing his shares. Wait, did he like steal his shares while he was 5150? I don't think so though. I think he actually just made him sign it. <laughs> I swear to God, I don't. I think he actually just had him like sign him over. I'm not 100 percent sure, but um, I don't think he used it like that. It wasn't like you know anything like that because you're thinking wow. like more like conservatorship type route right like, yeah. like britney spears and like, yeah i don't That's think so no and how long was the ceo involved 15 16 17 and then bro when when banks started popping off in 2017 18 like with the cloud house stuff he he ate all that shit up he was so into that la lifestyle and like cloud and like you know trying to like make because it's like to him it's like oh my god more connections of rich people people that i can scam Ooh, like I swear to God, I swear to God, he's a demon. He's a monster, I swear. And during all of this, you were still uploading three videos a day from 2014 Wait, to in, 2017? In, in, yeah, 2014, 15, 16, 17. 15, 16, 17, sorry. It was when I triple upload every day for, a year, for years, yeah. And then during 2016, some kid crashed your car or crashed into your car? I crashed into my car. I wasn't even in it. Wait, so did you ever sue that kid? No, why the fuck would I do that? That's so mean. Well, you said in like a video way back then that you might have to sue yeah, him. Yeah, because his insurance only covered 100,000. So there was still like wow. one, well, I mean, with the upgrades, 200K unaccounted for. At that time, I was like, I'm making way too much money a month right now to f over this 21 year old kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, why would I do that? That's so mean. But low key, wish I did it because I, <laughs> I got, I'm getting f over in real time today because I didn't do that. Okay, but we're in 2016 though. So, like, what happened there while we're on this timeline? Yeah, so it was the end of 2016. It was a day before I moved to LA. Car on, car on the side of the road was getting loaded up into a truck. Body shop guy, he just finished all the shit on it. Loading it, Mustang, boom, fishtail, boom, crash. Okay, so his insurance covered like 100K of it, and then your insurance yeah. covered like yeah, yeah, the weird. rest of that car? Yeah, and then I bought a new car, and then like I bought the same car back, and then I was like, ah, it doesn't hit the same. Bro, big as L, sold it, bought a McLaren, but like I just bought that new R8 for 260, and I sold it two months later for 160. What? What? immediate 100k loss and i had the front 110 for the mclaren like on top because they, they took 160 as credit then the front 110. wait so how, wait how'd you lose over a hundred thousand dollars so quickly on that car hey, bro you drive it off the lot done but you bought it new yeah, yeah, yeah. again yeah, yeah. all brand new cars that's why that's why i hate myself what when you're buying brand new cars what's wrong with me bro i am sorry no no no, no. <laughs> Be, no, be sorry no. that I had a brain like that. Don't be sorry that that happened. Be sorry that like no way your brain oh. works like that. I'm an idiot. I fell into the temptation. I fell into the, you know, the, oh, I want to be cool and have a car. Even though I never like thought that. I never manually thought, wow, I want to be a cool guy and get a car. That's why I did it. Subconsciously, that's why I did it. I did it to try to be yeah. that guy. I did it so people would think it be differently, see it as a sign of success. But it's stupid. You know what I mean? Like, Wait, but you bought the McLaren used though, right? Wait, I don't, I've never bought anything used in my life. No, dude, no. I'm not, no. I don't learn, I don't learn. But I'm good now. It's been, uh, how many How many years of buying clean? I have my three. Okay, well, you're buying your phone. next car. You're buying oh, it used. <laughs> Hell no. What would you say is the worst financial decision you've ever done? Which one? Just in general, like. My cars, absolutely. My cars. Because this is what I, I, I was telling you this before like we started really filming. And I advise this to all the young millionaires and all the people that are coming up. Avoid the temptation. Avoid the, oh, I got to show off to people. I got to buy this. I got to be this guy. Avoid that as much as you can and keep building your empire. Resist it. Resist showing off. Re unless you genuinely care. If you, if I loved the R8 from when I was like a six-year-old, I was like, when I grew up, I want an R8. Sure. Understandable. But still try to lease it or finance it. Don't be a fucking dumbass. But... And even if and if you can't lease or finance it, then be responsible and say, well, then I'm not buying this car. Yeah. My issue was they told me you can't lease or finance. I said, cash, <laughs> idiot, moron, stupid. Ugh, suda. But um, so yeah, avoid that and build your empire, man. And mm -hmm. then eventually, before you know it, maybe look a while, you'll be printing one of them things a day. It's like that you got and I get it. You want things now. What if you die tomorrow? Yada, yada, yada. I got you. But Chances are you're not going to die tomorrow, so just build an empire. Mm -hmm. Speaking, you know, mathematically, odd wise, you're just, you know, yeah. higher chance of you blowing the money and then going broke than you in dying the next day, not getting able to spend the money that you could have made in like a couple of years. You know what I mean? I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. And it's just better for your family and everyone involved. You know what I mean? You got to make yourself the better you and position yourself the best that you can so that you can take care of the most amount of people, right? Like, that's what you got to do. Like, 
because and i'm sure you're the same way because you know you want to take care of people even what you told me what you did with your money when you first got on yeah. because you have that need as a human to take care of people and be like what the f i get money i might as well just give it to all these people because like it feels good mm -hmm. you have to make sure you're good though because if you're not good how are you gonna do that for people yeah all right so it's like that's why it's like as much as you want to give and trust me bro, i have to learn the hardest way possible as much as we want to give as humans bro you got to always make sure you're good so that you can continue that giving not like you're good so that you can have you know jacob and co-watch and all this just so that you're good mm -hmm. so that you know everyone around you is good because you're a good hearted person bro i can see that so it's like i know you want to take care of your people i appreciate it you gotta make sure you're good so that you can't right Dude, the worst that happened to was this YouTuber back in the day called X Jaws. You know him? Yeah, that's a blast from the past. I haven't heard that name in I know six you years. It. I know you have it. But th what happened with him was, or he, I think, I want to say he was one of YouTube's first millionaires, like for real, like, like literally one of the first ones. And then he went to LA and started kicking it with Bieber. GG. <laughs> it was literally over after that. He got like, a, I'm pretty sure he started taking like Addies and stuff too. He went through oh. it. Like he was a cool guy. I was with X Jaws, but like, that's what happens, man. Like you come to LA, you start spending like. And he was a millionaire too, so it's crazy that he like ended up blowing it like that. I mean, it's not that crazy. It's easy to blow a couple million dollars, but it's just so bad for the people that like don't have that much and they're up and coming and they see LA's opportunity, but then they want to like, they want to fit in. Like what yeah. they want to fit in for. Like at the end of the day, these people don't even give a f about you and they don't even care that you have a Gucci wallet or Gucci. They don't care. Yeah. They don't give a f So it's like, who are you even trying to show off to? One random girl? Like, come on, dude. I don't know, it's just a pointless to me. Yeah, if you have to spend money to impress someone, they're not worth impressing. No, bro, you know what's so amazing where I'm at now, finally in life, and this is like what makes me so much better than I ever could have been back in the day. And this in general for myself is like, I only gain validation through myself because I'm so hard on myself and I'm so like real with myself that I don't pat myself on the back for trying actually, even if I do well, I show myself. Never like, I never actually give myself the credit that some people give them like I just don't do it because I don't ever feel like I've done enough or am enough right mm. so my entire validation comes from me and only me I don't need to wear anything or prove to you that I'm this or I'm that to get my validation it always comes from me I'm the person that tells myself you did a good job you did a bad job and it, honestly it helps me a lot yeah and maybe that's like some weird narcissistic I don't know but it's like I don't know maybe but it's just it helps me feel better in a sense that like I'm not doing anything for the wrong reason because I'm honestly just like I don't know. I feel like I got good intentions. I got, you know. Yeah, I feel like the only person you should be competing with is yourself from yesterday. Yeah, exactly. But not only just competing with myself, but also being the person that I'm doing, not I'm doing this for, but like can either make me feel good or bad about what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to like, like, even if I upload a video and it flops, like I'm not going to be like, oh no, like I suck like this, that. Like, it's not going to be that because I know the reality. I know like how this game works and I'm not tripping on that. I'm not tripping if a bunch of other people say, oh wow, his videos were bad. He fell out. Like, you think I give up? I don't give a what these motherfuckers think like because that's like when you do all these things for their validation right or wearing the clothes or buying the cars for other people's validation so they think you're valid and cool but it's like i don't give a what you think because at the end of the day bro even all the people that thought i was valid for all the cars about back then that goes away right it's like and mm -hmm. i don't even want that validation yeah. that's like bro every time i like met a fan who talked about that i like low-key fake respected them less like off rip like if they came up to me and like talked about jewelry or cars as their like main motivator or something like that i'm like oh cool but like whenever a fan came up to me, it's like, bro, like I love what you did for your mom. I love what you did for your stepdad and your sister. Bingo, like you know what you're doing. That's why I love swag. First thing he told me when he's doing face, he's like, bro, like when you inspired, you inspired me so much back in the day when you retired your mom, and that's like why I'm doing this. Perfect. That's like I love that. You're a good person. You have a good mission. Like it's it's good. Okay, so now we're in 2017. 2017. Yep. Same. You guys moved to uh, Newport. Moved yeah, Newport. And mm -hmm. What happened there? What did that feel like? So same thing. We're all living together. And again, I just didn't like the LA life because it kind of separated us. It took away from our bond, what made us us. Like in New York, if one of Banks' friends came or Lucas's friend, like even like one of the homies back then, like Nick, he was just Lucas's childhood friend. And then he comes to the crib. He gets my logo tattooed, gets 100K subs in a day, or it was maybe in a week max. I think it was 70K first day. And then he gained 100K wow. by the first week. And he was just like a homie because people like that connection. It didn't even matter if you were a big YouTuber or not. It was just that feeling that you got from like the people there, right? Mm -hmm. And the only reason that was able to happen was because Lucas brings his childhood friend to the house and he didn't come there and just kick it with Lucas. He came there and he kicked it with all of us. We used to move as yeah. a clique, like as a group. Like if you you don't come to the phase house and just hang out with one person, you come and kick it with everybody. Sometimes there may be, be a guy or two missing, like he'll be doing something, but like, you're hanging out with the bulk of phase every single time mm -hmm. like the phase house right so that was like just such a bonding thing dude we'd go eat food together all the time we'd go to the gym together all the time we do 
Also, because we only had one car. That was probably the issue, too. <laughs> so we kind of had to. But it was good. That's why, like, bro, those, like, up-and-coming, like, college-esque type, like, broke struggle days are low-key the best. Yeah, they really are. I swear to God, they are. There's just something about it. Is this something about? There's just something about us all sleeping on an air mattress in a three thousand dollar a month the house in Long Ah, oh, house. That's a decent house in Long Island. Um, versus sleeping in a mansion in a big lonely room. It's yeah. just, you know, like it doesn't hit the same. Of course, you yeah. Know. And and this and at this time, this is where I feel like the world kind of looks at you guys as like you guys really made it. But, yeah, but it's like made it because we didn't buy it. You only like made it if you like if we could buy that. Crib. But we well, well, you guys were giving the impression that you guys really made it, which actually like ended up hurting me in the longer run, I think, because mm. it made everybody think that like, how could you be bad? Your life is made. They're treating like you're a billionaire or something. Yeah. When like they don't understand how much it costs. And especially when you provide for a lot of people, like there's a lot of cost. And especially when you're trying to give those people an ultimate lifestyle, it costs, right? Mm -hmm. It's like. They don't understand how much, how easily you can make money. You can spend money e easily, easily, right? It's like not that hard. So that's the issue too. So when you moved to Newport, did everything just start falling apart or? Yeah, it was, it was, but it was good in the beginning. It was still good in the beginning. We still did our thing, but like, I'm just saying over time, like everyone kind of separated and made their own little friends out in LA and like had kind of the mission and goal changed for everybody slightly. We still like prioritize phase and one phase be big, but like what we did with our free time changed, mm. right? So everyone was doing different things. Even that's like when I became more of a stoner and was just like stonering around <laughs> and just like smoking backwards all day, I don't know. <laughs> and then Tommy was like his gym friends all day. And then Alex was like Roman all day. And then like Apex was back at home. So he was with all of his friends he grew up with all day. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, honestly, I was with Lucas a lot actually though. I was still with him. Cause like he was just, no, he started doing music. So he's with his music people all the time. So I was saying everybody started doing their own thing, right? And that mm. slowly separated us. And then you have our old CEO in the mix. like making worse and separating even more so that's like what kind of like broke the band apart right it's like alex and tommy end up moving to um la banks is already in his own crib apex ends up moving out getting his own apartment me uh lucas and tico and che we all moved to a crib in cal like it just everything split up and this wasn't the same it didn't hit the same anymore it didn't feel the same for us so it was a weird like transition especially because i went from a place making straight solo content to then making strictly group content yeah. it was weird to adjust back into strict solo content right so mm -hmm. that was like weird for me and then also adpocalypse old ceo and then like you know just all that free time killed me bro i swear to god yeah free time that's yeah rather Bro, I hate it. I'd rather be like busy and on a mission with like less than free time and have more with, cause you get, it's more opportunity to get lost in your mind. And Definitely. Kinda, I feel lost you know, when I'm not making content. Like really dwell on what's going wrong. And like, it's just, it's not good. Like I told you earlier, it's like- So is this is when you roughly stopped uploading like three times a day? Towards the end, yeah. Towards the end of the year, yeah. And then you guys lived in Newport for one year? One year, yeah, this one year. December, December, and then Calabasas, yeah. Let's just talk about 2018. So 2018 was when, this was actually a, a different time because we had our old CEO and this is like when he, we were, everyone was catching on to him, finally, bro. It's so annoying like to always be the guy that knows that guy's bull and nobody listens and then it happens and you're like, I don't want to be the guy that said I told you so, I don't. But just listen, just listen. I'm not going to tell you this guy's a scumbag for no reason. Mm -hmm. I'm not a spiteful person that's just like, oh, I don't like. No, it's like, if I'm telling you that guy's not, no good, I'm telling you every fiber of my being is telling me there's something wrong with that guy. Yeah. But it honestly, it didn't take like a intuitive genius to know that. It was like, bro, he lies a lot. Everything he says doesn't actually come true. And you can just tell, like, I don't know. It's just, it, that's especially what it was. It's like everything he would always say, like, oh, this is like everything's going to be changing now. We're really, we're really putting things together. He just say that every time we talk. We're really figuring things out now. I forgot. He used to have a line that we'd always like repeat and like, so funny. But yeah, he just, he's that guy, bro. Like he would always just like try to give you this like false hope and tell you everything's good and just kind of drag time, drag time, try to make as much money off your network and resources and rep phase this and try to live that phase lifestyle. And that's still what I don't like with certain corporate people is that like, hmm. like even this lawyer that's fing us over, like, She's going to all the face parties and bringing her friends and trying to be like a face member. Like, bro, go do legal shit. <laughs> go, go, right, go sign a paper or something. <laughs> like, bro, I'm just kidding. She can have fun too, but it's like. So what did this guy do to make everyone realize, okay, it's something's wrong here? Um, uh, what, what was it exactly? There's just so much that he's done. I don't know what specific thing it was. I think they kind of just like realized that he was like, spending all the money he was spending yeah. all the money and i think that's what it was i think it was like the wife 600k thing that really a month by the way so it's just i really think that um 
You know what's crazy? Alex was in the hospital and then him and his wife stole his car. Like not stole, they asked him while he was the, we're taking your car. They took his car. And then his wife like up his car. Like the whole side door thing was up. And then he like tried to like manipulate him into thinking that he did it himself type. Like he's insane, bro. <laughs> tried to make Alex be like, oh, that never happened. Like, okay, so if he's taking out 600K a month for his wife, why didn't he have his own car? Allegedly, allegedly, by the way. I gotta say allegedly, because this is what we hear, you know? Why didn't they just rent a car then at some point? Oh, it was like, it was, I don't know what the exact like reason was. Like they just needed it right there. I think he might've just flown in and like they just said like, all right, good. But again, they also weren't telling us that they have that money and whatever. And I don't know what they were doing with it, where they were sending it. I don't know these these actual answers, right? That's what, I said. Wow. That's what I'm saying. Most things are kept in the dark from us. I'm telling you, there's probably so many other things that would blow my mind. Like even just finding out that the lawyer went behind like Lee's back and the board, not the board's back, but like everyone's back to the board to get more shares that she ended up dumping. Whoa. But we weren't allowed to dump. While well, she knew information that, you know, she knew specific information that could be incriminating because as a lawyer who knows all the future moves to phase, it will affect your, if it will affect and impact your selling decision based on the knowledge that you know. So even though it was technically illegal for her to sell, she still has a duty as our chief legal officer to, you know, give us a heads up that she's gonna sell and be transparent. She can't just like know all that and make her move while we're all left in the dark. When did this happen? Was this back in 2018 or? No, sorry, that was now, yeah. Back then we had a lawyer who actually did us even worse low key. What happened then? He just, we had a different dude, bro. We pretty much had old CEO V2. The guy that he was working with was like the American version of him. He actually ended up going to start his own esport org after. Um, Xset, I don't know if you know them, but um, I've heard of them before. Yeah, so he they went and they started that. Um, one of the guys on it, I, I like him, Clinton Sparks. He used to like work with us. He was like doing music. And he was cool. But then the other guy, like, I don't know. He I thought he was cool, but he did the same sh as the old CEO did as well. Same same wow. thing. Wow. That guy was Norwegian, this guy's American, same. So it's like, I say he's the American, I don't wanna say his name, but the other guy's name, right? Same thing, bro. It's like, you know, they come in, like they got all this structure. He used to own like a, a, a brand that like, I wanna say sold for a billion or I don't know if they did a billion revenue, something like that. Wow. They were they were the big company, it's Karma Loop. I don't wanna put that in there, but it was, you know the company Karma Loop? Never heard of them. It was like an e-commerce website, like one of the biggest e-commerce websites and like, the early like 2010s ish and he like made that his garage so like he like scaled that job yeah so um yeah they did the same thing bro they like you know finessed money out like apparently he walked away with millions the lawyer walked away with millions that's what i hear allegedly also but i know that one's true i know they actually did get millions that both of them got millions of, and that's what like bothered me bro is the same way i told you it bothers me to make friends and care about a pro and then a pro goes to another team it's like that on crack because they come to this company, they pretend to care about me and love me. And I've seen this happen over and over and over again. So I'm supposed to believe all these same people that come in here and are only here for the money are gonna care about me when they're gone. Do you think any of them can text me or check? Like, they don't give a fuck about me. They came in here to take the money that they could from FaZe. They made me feel like they gave a fuck about me and cared about me so much, took their money and they left and they're never to be heard from again. It's like, that's the reality. So that's my relationship with a lot of these corporate people. Again, if it ever felt like it was a fan who came in here and was in like a C-suite executive, I would take care of that guy like crazy. I would like, that would be different because I would know he comes with good intention because he loves it mm -hmm. versus someone who's just coming because they know it's big. There's a lot of money in the industry and that's what they all do, bro. They come in here, they come to phase, they get their salary, they get their shares, they make their network or they like, you know, they just, you know, start exchanging, start networking through our network and sorry is what I meant to say. And then they just start politicking and doing weird, just try to climb the ladder, bro. All of them talk to Sean Lee. All of them talk to Sean Lee. Every single one of them. And then they go right in the office. I'll have my members that literally will talk about him to me and then go comment on his, on his place. Visionary, preach king. That's not telling him, bro. Like, you guys to stop trusting these motherfuckers either because all they do is talk to on you, including me. I, I, but I let him know. It's like I always tell him, when I tell him, when I think, when I tell him, like, I don't think you're a good CEO, I tell him that. I tell him these things. Because that's my thing is like, that's why I'm, I can get, I'm like a, Maybe I'm, I can get why some people like don't like being around me in that sense, because when it comes to phase and like, I'm a mother bro. When it comes to like phase and the brand, like, sure, I get it. You're a nice guy. I, I love nice people. My mom's the nicest, but I'm not about to put her as an executive in phase. I love my mom to death. She's so nice. But you know, I, I have to make that disconnection between mm -hmm. you're nice and you're an amazing person. Yeah. But you're also absolutely destroying the brand. You know, like you gotta be real about certain. And if I was in that position, I get it. And that's again, why when I was on, I wasn't even like, oh, at the time, cause I was on, I felt like I got kicked from the house, but like 
in my actual coherent self, mm -hmm. I 1 billion percent should have got kicked from the house. I was a liability and a half. Yeah. I completely understand that, right? It's not like I'm being like, oh, I'm this person, so they can never do that. Like, I don't think that way, bro. If, I'm, if mm -hmm. you're acting, you're doing crazy shit like that, absolutely. But I don't like how they're now trying to flip it as if I'm doing crazy shit now because yeah. I'm fighting for everyone's, you know, mm -hmm. security and I'm fighting for everyone for what they should get. And I'm fighting for the future generation of us and I'm fighting for just the understanding of how this all works. And then they try to paint me as crazy and they try to paint me as unstable. And they try to paint me as all these things because of something I went through years ago. That bothers me, right? Yeah. Because then it's like they try to they try to make like I'm telling you, half these phase members now probably like the way they I don't because I don't know. They're probably talking to each other all day about this or have been. And they probably, I'm telling you, I know for a fact they're painting me as crazy. They're painting me as this guy. They're painting me as, oh, he's lost it. Even mm -hmm. if you saw Banks in that. Yeah. In that Banks in a Hollywood Fix interview said that you were tweaking when you were talking about FaZe in your previous video. What do you think about FaZe Rain? He was, he's on, he's uploaded this YouTube video about exposing FaZe and stuff that happened we left our, behind us. We've lived our whole adult life on the internet. And uh -huh. that's my brother. And I won't speak a negative word about him. Okay. But He's tripping a little bit. He okay. He's tripping a little bit. What do you think he's talking about? Like, what's up with that? Ask him. That's the beautiful thing. Yeah. Speech and communication. Ask him. You're drunk as come out of a club. How many you tweaking for? What are we talking about? Like, if you, <laughs> like, bro, watch that clip. Look at the way he's like, come on, bro. No disrespect either, but like, god damn, you don't be telling me I'm tripping. What the? What the? This is what it is. Yeah. Again, oh, I'm tripping because I want my fucking my boys uh, get what they deserve and have more money so we don't get played by all these boomers that want to just use this for money. Like, have you guys not learned? Have you guys not learned how these people move? How many more times are we going to get burned before we realize, yeah, we just suck at trusting people. Like, when? Like, when are they going to learn? And that's what bothers me. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want that to keep happening. I don't. Yeah. It just sounds like a lot of hard lessons learned for you guys. Yeah. It is. It is. And they realize at a certain point. So this is but what year are we in? Hold on. Let's just get the old CEO. Yeah, so, OK, so we're, we're in 2018. And then you mentioned earlier that the old CEO stole Banks' shares. So oh, yeah, what we, did you guys end up doing there? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I don't remember what year it was that we did it for Banks where we diluted so that he could get shares as well. But what happened was, oh, actually, this was before we diluted for Banks. So we all had a million shares. Mm -hmm. They gave Banks, Tommy and Apex 1.4 each, and they gave me just a million. So then they didn't give me my 400K for shares. And I didn't know about it till like a year and a half, not even a year and a half after, I'm talking about like two and a half, three and a half years after. I didn't know about it. Wow. And then the reason Apex told me he didn't tell me till so long was because he didn't want me to, um, what's it called? He didn't want me to freak out. And he didn't want me to freak out until they had an answer for it. And he was trying so, so hard for it to get me that answer because he said it was out of his control, this, that, which I believe. Apex is an amazing human. I don't believe he would do me dirty like that. I genuinely believe he would lose sleep at night if he did something to me like that. I genuinely do. Um, but why would they do that in the first place, though? It just doesn't make sense to do that. Dog, I wish I knew. It's like not even like I was doing anything wrong like that at that point. Like I was going through it a little bit, not like that, like not even remotely like that for them to. It's just. I have no idea, bro. I genuinely have no idea. It's just I had such a bad relationship with that CEO at the time because same was the same happening now. Same. I'm against their bullshit. Call them out. I just call mm -hmm. them out. That's it. And these other people are they're idiots. They're blind to it. They're naive. They get played. It's like I have to learn once. These motherfuckers have to learn 10 times. It took me once and I realized that these motherfuckers ain't shit. These guys have to keep learning over and over and over again, keep getting played. And then maybe one day when they're when we lose everything, they're like, ah, now I get it. It's like, yeah. damn, bro. And they're like, they don't listen. It's like they don't listen at all because they they get fooled every single time by the suit. The sweet talk and the diffusive conversation every single time. Hey, don't worry. It's going to be fine. You're sure it's going to be worth money, baby. Don't worry. Like, bro. Oh, my God. Like, bro. And so many times in life, I almost brainwashed myself into thinking like I'm crazy. Like, oh, I must be wrong. I must be like looking too deep into this. But then God says, just kidding. You're right. Every single time. So it's like in this, where I'm at right now in life, I will never let anybody brainwash me into thinking I'm crazy. If I'm very passionate about a point, I know I know what I'm talking about. And that's why I've extended the offer to them multiple times. Let's debate this publicly. <laughs> you, think, you think they'd ever do that with me, bro? You think they would ever do that with me? They would never. Bro, I dare them. I will do it with anybody. I will please, let's debate publicly. I would love to. I would love to. Oh my God, I would love to because I would make them so nervous. You'd see it because you'd see it in their face, bro. Oh my God, that's why. That could be like a money earning opportunity. You I guys could sell a pay per view to. thing. Oh my, yeah, let's do it. And then it'd, it'd be bad for them because if they start saying, I'm like, well, I get the free card. I can say whatever I want. But, 
But um, yeah, they would never because they know that when I bring up certain things, you're going to see their facial reaction. You're going to be able to tell they're lying and I'll win. And that's why they won't do it. Even the same, we can go to court. We can do, I'll win because they're going to, the jury will tell, the people will tell by their facial expressions, by what they're saying. But court is a little bit different because as what's it, Jamie Foxx said in Law Abiding Citizen, it's not about what you know, it's about what you can prove in court. And he's so right and I hate it. But it's like, <laughs> it's the reality of things, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, publicly, I would absolutely love to. I would love to just like, talk whatever let's just be super transparent you guys tell me what you guys think where i'm in the wrong what i did wrong and i'll talk about y'all what like what come on bro you know that was more my thing is like and that's why i i can't believe more people well again they stand up privately but they don't ever stand up publicly but um more i just couldn't believe that they saw the guy who has more shares than all of them risk everything he has for them and it's not like a thing like how are y'all afraid to lose this while i'm willing to lose this you know what i mean like no, how do you not? Okay, say wait, that? wait. What time period are we in right oh, now? I keep switching years. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I just I get get so locked up in this. Okay, so you guys managed to boot the first CEO. Then you guys had the 2.0 version of him. What happened there? No, after the first bull CEO, I don't know if he was. He wasn't there for that long. Yeah, so he. I think he actually became president, and then Lee took over as CEO. Okay, so I don't know. If the, but I think Lee was still like, you know, figuring it out. But yeah, that the president and the lawyer ended up like, they were like best friends and they ended up like, you know, and they ended up doing their thing. You know what I mean? They were the ones that like, that lawyer was on that dealt with that whole like Tifu case and whatever. Mm. But um, did I already explain the Tifu contract and all no, that? No, no, you didn't. So yeah, so that old CEO, the one that the one that's getting kicked at this point, mm -hmm. um, it was also things like this, as to like why? Cause like, we didn't know about this obviously, right? It's like. Obviously, people want to assume like they think because that's what they think. The the illusion of phase and what it is like they think it's me, Banks, Tom, and Apex sitting there writing the contracts. Okay, so how much you guys think Tifu? <laughs> it's not like that at all, right? So the CEO at the time, I think, because Tifu was so small when he joined, because mm -hmm. he was not Tifu at that point. He was like a starting like no name. Like I think I think he had maybe twenty k subs or something like that. A couple hundred viewers on Twitch, right? Maybe less. And um, they, bro, it's most, obviously it's like. Whatever, people can believe what they want. Like if they ever think for a second we would ever want somebody to be on this contract, but it was like, I'm pretty sure it was 80 for phase, 20 for Tifu, which is absolutely insane. But that's just the contract that our old CEO just put in there for all the newbies, like the join phase, like all the ones that didn't have leverage at all, which is evil. But that's the worst creator contract I've ever heard of. But even him, he didn't claim on it. As bad as a person he is, he didn't like do anything about it, right? Like he never like claimed on it, did nothing. When I remember when Banks made the video, like they did three brand deals with him and they just split it with him the opposite. So he actually yeah. took 20 and then FaZe took it. Or yeah, he took 80, sorry, and FaZe took 20. Like that's when I started realizing that concept of, well, this this uh, this company yeah. gives us the bag and then we choose how much we pay out of that. I used to think that every time they give me like, oh, 50K brand deal for this, 100K brand deal for this, they, it would be from that company offering them that. But they offer them a different number than full screen chooses the number that they pay me, right? So. Yeah, I'm pretty it's, sure Machinima back in the day got a bunch of flack because they were doing 60-40, where the creator Machinima was getting 60%, 60 they were taking 40%. Yikes. And I think they were even locking people in for like five years as well. That's what I heard. Dude, you know, that was my first contract, but then I just wrote to them and said, bro, I'm, I literally am 14 inside that contract. Release me. And they did. I little pumped the shit out of them. You know, Lil Pump did that to get of his music contract. He's a G for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so many people got out that yeah, like that as well. Um, so wait, where are we right now? <sighs> oh yeah, so C old CEO, the Tifu contract. Yeah, but so that's like even him for as much as a piece of he is, he wasn't gonna do anything that either. But I don't blame Tifu for moving the way he did. Like I'm sure there's a lot of people around him saying like, bro, you know, like they legally could take 80% of, of your money if they wanted to. So that would freak anybody out, especially with how much money he made. Like that would freak anybody out. So. I don't blame him, but I mean, it makes sense, though, because like no creator wants to have that looming over their head, especially when they got as big and as then, what Tfue was. And then immediately just pick up Nick Merckx as damage control. That's literally what they used to call him. He's just our damage control. So funny. It's like and again, I have nothing against Nick Merckx like that. I do feel like he's an agent of the Matrix. So. <laughs> but um, I, I don't have a thing against them. Oh, no. But, uh, I just didn't like how there was no mesh really as like a phase member. It was kind of just like, hey, we're taking up a big name. <laughs> Look, and then it's like, as you can see, it's like. Nick Merckx, I promise you, most of his fans don't even think or give a f that he's in. They don't really even see him as a phase member. I promise you, there's no way. Most of his like fam, the M fan people, they don't even see him like a phase member like that. Like, oh, he's in phase, but like not really. So that's what I'm saying. That was also the start of them just not understanding how this 
work. So they look at it very technically and on paper, right? So it's like, we'll sign him, we'll do two merch drops a year, we'll execute mm -hmm. this amount of brand deals. Like it's just so straight to the business, not like we're gonna create three different IP shows with him with FaZe, including other members. We're gonna, you know, it's, it doesn't, it's not even remotely that type of thinking, not at all. It's just like merch, sponsors. It's just like the most basic think they're doing something. Like I thought even with the merch, it's like, come on, bro. It's like, wow, collab, amazing idea. Like every single time, just like same, different brand collab, same, mm. different brand collab. And that's like where they blew it is like when in 2018, around the same time, so I'm actually in the timeline for once, but um, we did the phase champion drop, which did amazing. For the first one we did, did amazing. They did like a couple million for that drop. I think that was our biggest drop ever. And then they got, so they said, all right, every color possible, go, 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 go. And then obviously that just stopped mattering because they put out every, it's, the, the demand is gone. The demand is gone. Everyone, everyone can get one. You can get anyone. There's so many. So it's like that, you know, like, bro, mm. if we just spaced that out a little bit more and like in between spacing it, just like thought like exclusive ones and we wore them and made people want them so bad. Like say we only had the black one at the time. And then a month and a half later, we're all wearing the white ones. And I was like, what the f I want the fucking white one. And then you don't drop it for two weeks and then you drop it. And it's like a bigger deal. You know what I mean? Like you just got it. And then you also make it a little bit more limited. So the amount of people that wanted to get it, couldn't get it just to f with them even more, just so that the next drop, they're like, now I mm. need to get it. And then guess what? You do it again. And then, you know, it's Supreme, bro. They got it. <laughs> It's a Supreme model. So yeah, they just like, kind of got too caught up in things like that and like, you know, getting investor money. And I get it. There was a lot of things that um, forced FaZe into that position. You know, there were a lot of things that like forced us into selling some of the company for the, the handle certain suits and mm -hmm. such. But yeah, so there were things like that that I guess had to be done. But still, that doesn't necessarily <laughs> change how the lack of transparency constantly existed in the company. Because of course, things were way worse back 2015, 16, 17, 18, like with the old management. But it's still not transparent. Well, now it is. And I, I couldn't believe Lee said that Lee said that to me in the meeting today. He's like, well, yeah, now you can see, go see the numbers. I'm like, yeah, now, now, of course, because it's in public. What the, f I, it, it matters to see it before that happens. It's like, we had no idea who owned what. And then they keep trying to say like, oh, well you did, we did show you that. How come I didn't know I was missing 40% of my shares for two and a half years, if, if, if you're so transparent? How come it took me two and a half years to find out how much shares I had? Nothing's transparent, bro. So they'll tell me like, they, like they would tell me like I had this many shares, but they never tell me how much he had mm -hmm. or he had or he had or anything to give it a scale. You know what I mean? So that that's how they kept getting people like Alex and Rug and all those people. They tell them, we we're giving you this many shares and it's good. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And they wouldn't know. They would never tell them how much it's value, how much it. But so you guys never knew the total amount of shares that existed? Yeah, they never tell you like how much everyone owns. You own this much, so relatively you own this much. So the, they don't break it down. There's no bar graphs or pie charts or nothing. Nothing. Wow. Nada. It was just straight word of mouth and they tell you and then it would just say your share numbers on a contract and call it a day. But like you never see it like, compared to anything else. So it's like, if me, I'm one of the main shareholders at that point. I mean, still technically am, but I'm saying like at that point, like I had more than what I have now because it wasn't as diluted. Still, I'm getting no updates when I ask. It's, ah, well, bro, even the other day, we were trying to talk about like just numbers for, it was another day actually, it was the other month. I don't know what's wrong with me. Is that four or five months ago? Oh, I cannot wait to get to that story by the way, because that's like a very crucial part, a crucial part of the story, which actually shifted everything and is the reason why a lot of this happened. So actually, I'm going to wait on that story because it's actually like, yeah, okay. So he here we are now at 2019 yep, in the storyline. So, okay. So this is where I take accountability. No, 2018, I was in Calabasas. 2019, this is like where I take accountability and I say like, this is where I could have for sure stepped up more and like tried to be more involved. Mm -hmm. But um, I was in Canada for one, like I went home, both my childhood pets died. I was with my puppy, couldn't take him away from my parents, felt bad. I love my puppy to death. So I'm like, I'm not going nowhere. Stay in 2019. But I still could have 1 million percent worked on phase and tried to fix that more. In I could have spent that whole year in 2019 trying to fix that issue and I probably would have solved it. But instead, I chose to just not do that as much and just like focus on the gym and random that and just like some YouTube videos here and there. But like with my ex-girlfriend at the time, just like dumb. Sh I so I absolutely like wish I took that time and tried to like, you know, spend as much time fixing it on the inside because I'm, I'm sure back then I could have done it in like 2019 or got it to a point to where it was a lot better than what it is today, right? In my opinion, at least. But yeah, so 2019, it was uh, it was like a chill regular year, but it was doing well for like Fortnite and some phase videos here and there. Like they were doing like their thing in LA. Like I wasn't in those videos. Like it was a whole different cast and it was actually doing really well. Like a lot of those videos, like during the Fortnite era, it was like, it was doing well. So things were cool there, but it was like still the, it was all the illusion, like half, and that's the craziest part. Half those phase members in those, most of those phase members in those videos didn't own they're just so gassed to be in phase and promote phase and live in that crib and la da da da, right? So they're all just down for that. And things were doing well. 
um but it was the same thing you know they're just trying to keep everyone distracted keep making videos keep doing your thing and they're controlling the background who owns what chairs who's coming in how much chairs this person gets etc right mm -hmm. um nothing ever to the face members never thinking oh we got a bonus this guy this or we got to give this guy this like none of that right and even like when we did the spack like no one got like a bonus or we never got paid out for it and which i feel like would have been fair to be honest like if we like open up publicly do we not like at least pay off the guys that made us do that like a bonus or something nothing like zero like literally zero right um to my knowledge okay so you, like, you spent all of 2019 in canada and then 2020 rolls around and then you moved back to the u.s yep so i came right back to the u.s then that's like that's like when banned for me <laughs> that's like when um what's it called but that was only 2020 i still was creating I was still in the crib things were cool but it was just a weird vibe anyways all around it's just when there's too much partying mm -hmm. and that bro is just it's hard to lose sight of what you're doing right so there was a lot of that in that crib and it just kind of everything up but it did okay but it should have done a lot better for sure but it did do well yeah because you made um, a video i'm pretty sure like march 10th like right before the pandemic started pandemic. saying like the phase house is back and oh, you were going to start uploading a whole bunch back. the phase house is officially back oh i thought you meant like me personally that was like our first um that was like the first vlog i did at the new crib um it did okay so i'm saying like things uh but some of the videos did really well on like the face channel and stuff but yeah so that year same um a lot of shuffling in between like who's doing what and like we had like bro even like when sam pepper and was working on phase and stuff like that on youtube content yeah behind the scenes i don't know why people liked him in la like so Whoa. he was like an undercover dude that just worked behind the scenes and so what yeah he actually did a lot of <laughs> talk talks on youtube back then like he was yeah he was like the creative director for all that um wow but then he saved the kids and sh of all of them which is crazy <laughs> crazy but no so yeah 2020 things are you know they're okay obviously i went through my so again once again double accountability i did absolutely terrible in 2020 for phase and for myself and for my fans and for my community all that i did terrible for all though for my family for everybody i sold i'm sorry but that one i take the most responsibility and i have in accountability of course like i feel bad there um 2021 i'm in a wheelchair but I'm seeing life a lot better, way more grateful, happy to work on phase and get phase to the point where it needs to be. I understand that I'm not in a position to where I can make videos every day like I used to because I'm in a wheelchair and it's just, it's so much weirder vlogging from a chair and then like the standing of me able to move around and all that. It's just such a different vibe. So I just didn't even have the confidence to be honest to make videos like in a wheelchair. I just didn't feel good. So I wanted to work on the back end of phase and make sure good. So I would, just, you know, go to the warehouse. And this is how they're trying to flip it now is that I strictly was there to work on the YouTube channel, even though that was never the case, because I explained it so many times. I can't just work on a YouTube channel while we have sales, marketing and social team all me like you can't have upload good YouTube videos while you have to make every other one a brand deal and put a, a Nissan brand deal in it or you have marketing and socials just selling the bag and like ruining everything like the socials never made it a place to where it's like wow i can't wait to go watch a new phase video like it just wasn't ran that way and like they were f***ing everything up so i was like bro i can't even focus on youtube with all this external baggage right now because they're just f***ing everything up so i was like we have to fix these so everything kind of moves together because you kind of have to like synergize all that you know what i mean like everything has to kind of move together and it was completely separate like every department wouldn't talk to each other like sales marketing and, and content and socials like they wouldn't even really speak to each other like that there was no like group meeting with all of them so they're all their heads are locked in they know what the next moves of phase are they know what's happening none of that so i was like i can't just focus on youtube so i have yeah. to go and try to do all this so i'm spending so much time talking to sales i'm so much time talking to marketing and actually the least amount of marketing but a lot with the talent development social everything i'm talking to all of them con all of them just to try to make right and then apparently they're, they're not counting that as work now they're counting that as like i didn't do anything because that wasn't technically my job on some nerd even though Lee always encouraged me to go find these people and talk to them or whatever, but you know, it is what it is. And even like the Ron, like, cause I started technically in July, 2021 and I did it for a year, over a year, but now they're just trying to like snub me and be like, okay, we're only going to give you four to six months of it. But it's like, nah, bro, hell no, nah. hell no. Nah. It was only because after four to six months, um, I told Lee, I was like, bro, it feels terrible to be the hardest working person in the room. The one that cares the most, the one that actually built the most for this brand. And I'm the only one in this entire building not getting paid. I don't feel good about it. It makes me feel like shit. it's been six months or at that point it was like four months and I don't feel good about it, bro. So then he's like, bro, what? You're the best, like you're the best for being this impatient and understanding like, bro, what? I'd be the worst person in the world if I expected you to come every single day and not get paid. So why weren't you getting paid? Because uh, of my visa situation. 
So it was understandable, uh. right? It was understandable. Like I didn't technically mm -hmm. have my work visa, but then again, they were, well, I hear two different sides. My immigration side tells me FaZe was stalling it. Lee tells me FaZe had nothing to do with it and they weren't stalling it. And like, it wasn't them. And it was my responsibility, this, that, which I get, it was my immigration status, but I'm getting a visa to work for like at FaZe and help FaZe. So like, and y'all are yeah. doing it for me. So it's like, what, what what do you want me to do, bro? When they're telling me that the, the only thing holding it up is a payment from FaZe. It's like, what do y'all want me to do? So that's what I'm saying. They, they tried to like over blame me for that, which is fine. I guess if, they're, if I do need to be blamed for that and I'm missing something, sure, I'll take it. But bro, they used it against me. They did because at a certain point, they owed me, they owed me $600,000 and they said, well, we can't, it's illegal because of the SPAC, this, that. And now they're trying to backtrack today too because they're trying to get themselves all legally aligned. I see what the f they're doing. They told me that they couldn't pay me because legal status, cool, that's fine. But then they ran in and tell me, okay, if we, we'll, we'll wire you 100K right now if we're gonna settle this situation. Whoa, 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 whoa. What happened to f***ing, it's illegal. Okay, how about 300K? What happened to you guys can't pay me because it's illegal, but now you can pay me because it's 300K because you guys negotiate and cut in half what you guys owe me. So then I get in a call with in the Dan Shribman, CEO of B Riley, the guy that fronts and pays all the money. He, we had a verbal agreement. It wasn't on the contract or anything, but we had a verbal agreement. He was like, yeah, bro, it absolutely makes sense that we owe you all this money. I told him my entire case. And I told him even at a point I said, if Lee told me, hey, if you don't show up for the next six months to the office every single day the way you have been doing, we're gonna cut that payment or we're gonna cut it in half. That would have at least been communicated. But they never communicated a thing to me. They made me feel like everything was going fine and then last second, well, no, right? You know what I mean? Like that's just the way it felt for me. It was like, bro, I was still doing, I just wasn't showing up as much. And I made that very clear to you and you never said, well, okay, we're gonna have to cut anything. You just made it sound like, bro, what? I understand, I understand. Then I try to pull that at the, like in the end. And there's a lot of other things to and that. You were in a wheelchair at this time as well, right? Can you imagine that? Bullying the kid in the wheelchair? <laughs> Crazy. No, I was kidding. But yeah, it was, it was. Were you still currently in a lot of physical oh. pain at that time? Oh, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. But bro, it was like, I just don't feel good. And it's like, bro, they did that to me when I was in a, like, and I don't want to say like in a wheelchair or anything like that, but they just did that to me in like the hardest time of my life when they knew I needed it more than I ever needed in my life. And they still withheld my money from me to try to negotiate a better deal for them for a company that I built for them to come work at and make all these shares for. And it's like, it just didn't make me feel good, bro. And it made me feel like, damn, if they do that to me and, and like the person who built this brand is a major shareholder, who the f won't they do that to, mm. right? It's like, why would a phase, why would you even want to join phase when it's like that? Why, if they're treating people like that, what happens if can you get hurt? If you're providing for phase like rug, what happens if rug gets hurt? Oh, now it's rug because rugs hurt because now he can't create anymore because something bad happened to him. Mm. Like I get the business aspect of it. I do. Like if you're not like providing them the money then I get it. But like in certain situations with, with brands like this, it just doesn't work because phase isn't that brand where like you could throw it on water bottles and it'll sell a billion a year or even 10 million a year, it won't. That's like why, that was like one of the main things that um, hit me this way was, um, you know, this is also like a 2021, 2022 like collab. Mm -hmm. So in, before we went public, we had a meeting. It was me, Tommy Banks, Apex, uh, the president, Zach Katz, Lee, my lawyer, and the old chief strategy officer, Kai Henry. Go, love him to death. He's actually amazing. He ended up leaving phase for like similar reasons as me, but like on a different, like on a corporate level, because he just absolutely hated the way that that ran. Like nobody listened, nobody asked. Everyone's just moved on, everyone was politicking and weird and on dick. And like, he just, he's a dude that actually wants to get done. And he actually cares about like us. And he actually cares about like what we're going through. Cause like, I don't know, he just sees it from a different perspective and he, he understands the brand building aspect. He's not an idiot, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So even though I'm not, not to say that the other people are like idiots, they just have different goals, right? They just have like, they want to make money out of this. They don't care about building the brand for the next 5, 10, 20, 50 yeah. years. They just want money now and get out and move on, right? So he, he's a little bit different with that. But we had a meeting and we all agreed. Lee, Zach, everybody agreed. Whatever me, Tommy Banks, and Apex say goes. We agreed on that. Whatever we say goes. You know what I did immediately the same day? What? I went and got contracts drafted for getting Alex more shares. Alex, I had him like adapt. I had him coming in at 20, at that time it was $27 million extra shares. Wow. And he had same thing for rug because I felt like just, you know, like, I don't know. I felt like, I felt like this should be fair in like shares because like Alex had a huge part back in the day. Rug has a massive part today. You know, this one. Mm -hmm. are, um, and then Tico, a few, I think it was like, I forget, I just remember them both being 27 million. Tico's was like, like half of it. So his was probably like 13 million. Yeah. I put like, and all I did for myself was bring me back to where I was supposed to be. That's it. 
because I did adjust some of the shares, but I think I was only missing like an extra like 50K or something like that, 50, 100K or something like that. So I just wanted to adjust it back to what it should have been. And I'll be like, that's it for me. And I wanted to give everybody a million dollar signing bonus, not signing bonus, but just like a bonus for everything. Like, yo, you guys are from the New York house, blah, blah, blah. So I want to take care of the New York house first. And then I wanted to take care of people like Swag and Sway and even like High Skies and all those people. I want to take care of all those people after care of the New York house. And immediately, bro, I got Tommy, Banks, Apex all signed off on that. So we should be golden. I even got like people like Ty, like the CSO I was talking about. I added more shares for him. Um, a couple employees that we had that I thought were cool people for them as well. Not cool people. I just, I did that all for them, bro. It's for them to like, well, what the talent did after that. But what they did immediately, and this is like what well, everything up. I That was me starting to build the union. I was trying to build the union at like the highest at that point. Because I realized I'm like, yo, we're about to go public. The things are about to get so and critical for us if we don't have this union set up which is what happened so immediately what they did was they reached out to people like alex and rug and tried to negotiate new deals with them which was at a way lesser like amount than they would have got if they just stood strong and took what we could have got them what we agreed on saying what we what we for agree on will happen so they're taking deals that are worth alex and well how much are they 100k shares because that worth one hundred seventy thousand dollars, bro thousand dollars yeah 27 million well that was when the stock was at like 20 i think or like higher but still i know that's worth more than 150k i know it is i just know it is that's where it gets up is when people within like a union a team start folding mm -hmm. like you can't I, and it's crazy that he folded on me for this when i was willing to risk everything i had for all of them like that's what pisses me off and that's like when i started having like internal battles with myself it's like who am I even fighting for anymore? Like, who am I fighting for? I'm, I did all this to bring these guys more money and more leverage and more everything and to protect them and all this and just to preserve and enrich the brand as much as we can. And then they're over here signing penny deals. Like, it's like, what are you doing? Like, so that's like why, again, I, and I want this public, I'll never speak to Adapt again. I'll never be friends with him. I'll never talk to him. He's the biggest rat. He's the biggest rat out of all of them. I see him as more of a rat and like half these corporate people, because again, can I blame a businessman for doing business? No. Can I blame someone that I came up with that I birthed, that copied everything I that I taught him everything how to do, to then snake me a decade later when I'm trying to save his shares and bring him thirty million dollars? That's crazy. It's like no. So that's why I've been dying inside. It's like, bro, whose side am I even on anymore? So that's why I've just chose my own side. I'm done with both of them. Done with the corporate end. Done with half the talent. And by the way, most of the talent is innocent. They have no part with any of this. They don't know how anything works. Even the ones that are out here. It's a very few people, very few amount of people that actually know how this works. Like even like people like Swag, I know they're out here, but he's also out of the loop. He doesn't know. He's the person you think would. So it's like automatically when I say that, you know that people like Sway, people like all the the Nuke Squad, um, they don't know. They don't know what goes on. Even Nick Merckx has no idea what really goes on, right? He just takes his check and calls it a day. Doesn't give Yeah, bro, that's just that like me up the most, man. It's like, I don't even know where I stand now is because I did all this, you know, to help these boys and they fell for the trap. They fell for, he's crazy. He's losing it. He's just, because what? I'm I'm losing it because I'm so upset that I'm watching all these old motherfuckers come in, take more than you guys are worth, leave, cash out on that, and just move on with their lives while you're stuck, stuck here being forced to become an employee for something that you already should have had. How am I insane for that? How am I tripping for that? How am I like losing it for trying to get them more? What am I doing wrong? You know what I mean? That's what I'm trying to understand. I get that they try to paint in a specific way. They try to be sound a specific way, but like, what am I doing wrong? We have receipts of all this. I can, can show you everything for the contracts that I made for all of them to immediately handle their. And then that's why I said, they immediately say, oh, we already worked out a deal with Alex. We already did this. You can't be in the union like that, but when I'm trying to build something to protect us all. So I'm mean, just what I'm saying. It's like, I'm in such a tough situation now where it's like, do I look out for them? Do I, do I care about just like spreading the truth? Do I show what all this and just take care of what's good for me? Clearly, I chose option B. I said, I just got to still tell the truth. But um, it just feels better. I'll sleep better at night. And if I die tomorrow, I'll be so much happier. Holy shit. Bro, bro, bro. You ready? If I fucking died in 2020, <laughs> they would have t-shirted my ass. Just so you know. They would have thrown my ass on a t-shirt and they would have milked the fuck out of my death and they would have made bands off it. When I got hurt, bro, when I was in a wheelchair, six months before anybody who was a three-minute walk away came and saw me. Wow. Six months, bro. Maybe I'm the problem. I might be the problem, honestly. Cause like, but I also get it. I was back then. I was a problem because it was like maybe they thought, and this is why like I forgave all of them. I was like maybe they thought I was that same guy. Mm -hmm. You know, like even though they should have known me better to know that that wasn't me. Maybe they thought I was still on and tweaking. So I'm like, okay, okay, I understand. If that's who they thought they were gonna see, I get it. But like, come on, dude. 
it, it seemed like like Nikon and them were yeah like they cared when they yeah, were yeah, like no, banging Nikon on your door and stuff. I love Nikon and Tico. I actually do. Don't like Nikon, Tico, Frazier, Jarvis. Like, bro, come on. Apex, amazing people. Like, genuinely good-hearted people. Wouldn't really. That's why, like, I'm telling you, like, when the Frazier like save the kids happened, I'm like, nah. Like, Frazier's not that guy. He's not finna scam. He's not. First off, he's not a dumbass. To, like, out himself like that. It's like scam people in broad daylight. And two. He's just not, he's too good of a guy, bro. But he definitely did get like, you know, he got greedy and wanted more opportunities to make money and things like that. And I'm telling you, it was Sam Pepper in his ear. I know for a billion percent of fact, it was all Sam. It was. Major's a good guy. I'm telling you, and I've known him for, he's actually the person I've known the longest in this whole, you know that? I've known Frazier the longest out of anybody. I was in Rise with him. So it's hmm. so funny. Like way back in the day. But um, he's a, he's an amazing dude. But it's just, again, he just had to learn his lesson, you know? Okay. Yeah. Life is just but, one big lesson. Oh, God. But yeah, man, it's gone to a point to where they just try to paint me a certain way for trying to fight for what's right. But you know how it is, bro. You know how this works. People that get it, they get how this works. You don't even really need to explain. They're like, yeah, I know how this works. And other people, they they fall for the illusion. They think everything they see is real. That's the problem. They think everything they see is real. They think that they, the, the people, there's people still to this day that think that like, Phase is a brotherhood and we all just like kick in and talk like bro most people even talk to each other like there's no phase group chat there's no like hopefully there is now but there isn't that's what i'm saying there's like nobody talks to each other nobody likes each other that's why i always say the side men is the new york house that actually liked each other amazing <laughs> it's true it's <been> true <laughs> i love the side men yeah they just like they maintain their friendship they make because they actually like each other that's what i'm saying they like genuinely got along and they've They've held that bond for so long. I would be so sad if they were faking it. Oh my God. <laughs> like, no, love is not real. So this is the full phase rain phase story. Yeah. No, that story that I just told you was 2022. Yeah. Cause that was the year after like I did the work and then now they're trying to jit me on it. And like, it just, it sucks, bro. It's like, I don't want it to be like this, but again, it's, it's deeper than me. It's more about this fact that like this even happens, right? The fact that and I get it, it's not something that most people can relate to because most people won't go ahead and start. I actually saw a funny ass tweet. Some dude said, he's like, like pretty much just saying like, no way you're making this whole video as like advice for people to not let their multi-million dollar gaming organization get robbed. Like as if that's like <laughs> happens to everybody. Like, oh my God, didn't yours get robbed too? I know, I hear them. Like, it's not about that, but it's more, again, it's more about just like understanding how things work, not blindly supporting these organizations without knowing like what really goes on. Like stuff like that you know what i mean because mm -hmm. and also too a small amount of people that will grow up and you know become content creators or work for a certain industry it's just it's entertainment industry period it's like that you know what i mean actors they all deal with that and musicians they all do that that's why what's the best thing for anybody be independent have your own leverage that's like the best thing you can do in this industry that's why i gave like in my video i talked about like aiden and speed and kai like i hope to god they don't sign a nobody bro and do some dumb shit. i hope to god they don't because they're just gonna get they're just gonna get robbed you know what I mean? So, I don't know. I mean, wow. That's just one insane story you have, though. And I'm sorry it didn't go the way you planned, I'm yeah, assuming. Yeah, no, bro. And it's, I wish I could tell, like, yeah, but, you know, you live and learn. I'm grateful for the experience, you know? Like, I got to expedite life years because of this, so that's good. No? And it's all about, if, like, and I can't waste the lesson. I can't, like, sit there and just, like, let that happen to me and not, like, make something out of it. You gotta, like, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? You gotta, you gotta learn from that and, like, <laughs> actually do something with it. So... I'm excited for that, bro. I, I believe that I did all this for the right reason. I know I didn't do anything wrong. So my story is never going to change. I'm never going to, you know, hold on this. And I know I did it. So it's like, I don't regret a thing. If I lost everybody because of it, if I don't have anybody in my life anymore because of it from that world, I don't give a f mm -hmm. no way that me doing something for y'all makes y'all like not f with me no more because I went out of my way to try to make y'all more money. That's like it. That's it. Then I want nothing to do with y'all anyways, if that's the case. I would absolutely want nothing to do with that because y'all are fucking too far gone. Like, what the f are we talking about? So it is what it is. So honestly, if it was up to me right now, if I could flip a fucking switch and go back in time and just be like, y'all, let me focus on myself, I probably would. Because at the end of the day, I'm not even doing this for them specifically anymore like that anymore. I'm more just doing it just because I can't fold, to be honest. Because my entire brand's always been like, keep it real. I can't, I just can't fold. I'm not allowed to. So it's like, whether even a, uh, whether I even want to do this or not, I have to keep doing this. Like, I have to. Otherwise, I'm fake. And then my whole keep real shit's over. Then I'm like, oh, my God, now I'm not keeping it real. Then I have to cover up my tattoo. It's going to be a whole big thing, bro. I can't I can't deal with all that right now. So I just got to, you know, stay consistent to the story. And I just got to keep telling it for what it is. And I got to, I want to just make change, bro. I really do. Again, mm -hmm. if I even can change 100 people's lives with this, I'm blessed. I'm feeling good about it. Like, I really am. Like, 
and I opened up a thousand people's eyes about it, I'm cooling, bro. And I and I know I have. I can already see that. So many people are starting to understand this. You know what I mean? A lot of people are. So I'm with it. And like, it's it's just the right time, bro. With everything that happens with like, you know, you see all the Twitter files stuff, all this happening with Andrew Tate, all this like. People are waking up now more than ever, right? So what are, what are your plans for the future, if you don't mind me asking? Man, I just want to, again, I want to share all the knowledge that I've like gained from all this. Anything that I feel could be like insightful to people and help them, I would love to share that as much as possible. You know, I wanted, I want to be a constant positive force for all my like, viewers and just anybody in general. There's way too much negativity out there. I was even just like wrapped up in it and I feel like I went such, I went down such a fucking dark path, like seriously bad that I want to bounce back from it so hard because it'll. I know it'll make other people feel amazing. And I don't even mean like bounce back in terms of like millions of views, hella money. I don't even mean necessarily like that. More just like mental clarity, health, the way I look, the way I feel, gym, et cetera. Just like quality of life rather than necessarily the money and the numbers. That's what I want because I know that there's so many people out there that are in that rut. Maybe not the same thing. Maybe they didn't have face stolen from them, but they whatever it is bro they feel the same like they feel that level of sadness they're just dying they're they they give up they feel like life's over that you know what i mean and i just want to show them that bro eventually it can get so much better because i don't think people understand the level of like give up i was in or like the level of like i believe that i didn't care even if life got better i just wanted to die don't care don't care don't care that's what i want and it was like that for so many years that i know there's so many people out there that are dealing with that and I just want to bounce back for them just to give them hope, bro. I swear to God, I want to give those motherfuckers hope so bad because like I would have loved to see someone like go through that at the same time. Like if someone were to give me that perspective while I was going through it, you know, so I got to be for me what I needed. Type. Well, hey, man, I guess you just got to run it up. Got to, bro. And it's like, bro, to be honest, I, if I'm not working, I'm useless. Yeah. Like that's what it is for me. And I get this entire game on a whole different level. I'm I'm sure you can 100%. relate to it. Most people that don't relate to the way that we get. But if I'm not making videos, I do feel lost. Yeah, that's what it is, bro. I need to like, this is where I'm home. This is where I'm alive. This is like what I know. I could sit on a podcast, talk about YouTube for three straight, four straight hours. I literally could. Like I could just go off. Yeah, bro. I mean, we have. We've been recording for four hours now so it's been great dude it's been great talking to you i, know. I was about to say i just realized it's 11 o'clock and i think we got on at like seven something oh yeah well rain thank you so much for sharing your story and i hope you have a wonderful night and uh we should talk soon man likewise bro thank you so much bro. i appreciate the opportunity to have you on your platform man i feel like youtube's fuck with me so i need this low key i'm gonna i'm gonna do a run of like podcasts bunch of different things bro hell yeah i'm excited for it